So welcome everyone. Welcome to the second webinar, this time about monitoring wells for environmental investigation. So this is me again. I will give this second webinar as well. Um, I explained about myself the last time, so I will go to the next slide. Um, last week we had the first uh, webinar, it was about soil sampling during environmental field investigation, how to take a sample. Today we are going to talk about installation of the groundwater monitoring wells for environmental soil investigation. And the last webinar will be next week. We are going to talk about groundwater sampling. Um, we have the same setup as last week. Uh, it means we I'm going to talk about 35, 40 minutes and then you will be able then I will start um, answering your questions. And uh, I would like to ask you if you could put your questions in the screen. So I will answer them after I finished the presentation. And then I will take around 20 minutes for answering questions. So let's start. Well, this presentation is uh, I will give a brief introduction about some hydrological aspects on, on groundwater. I will talk about the correct installed monitoring well and equipment and materials used. And we will talk about ways of installing of a monitoring as well. Um, this is more or less the content. A monitoring well. Um, also called observation well or groundwater monitoring well or piezometer. Uh, it's the same, although there are slight differences, but in an environmental soil investigation it has more or less three functions. The first one is to produce water representative for the groundwater surrounding the screen part of the well for sampling. Secondly, to perform water table measurements. And the last one is to detect floating layers with l nepple or layers, layers with d nepple. Let's first start with some definitions. Um, groundwater is that part of the subsurface water that fully saturates the pore spaces of a soil or a rock mass. A rock mass. This zone is called the saturated zone. Above, the un, uh, above is the unsaturated zone in which water does not fully saturate the pores and the water there is kept in the pores by capillary forces. The upper surface of the saturated zone is called the groundwater table. At the base of the unsaturated zone, there is a capillary fringe, a thin layer in which the water has been drawn upward from the groundwater table by capillary forces. You can compare it with a dry sponge, which you put on the water, not in the water, but on the water. And that sponge will become wet because water is sucked into the sponge by the same forces. The thickness of this fringe depends on the soil texture. It could be a few centimeters, but in a clay soil, it could be one and a half meter, for example. The true position of the groundwater table is shown by the level of standing water in a drilled borehole or dug to some depth below the water table. We can Identify so-called confined and unconfined groundwater aquifers. In an unconfined groundwater layer, the water table is free to receive recharge from above and can rise or fall freely in response to changes in the amount of recharge. 
The confining layer is a subsurface layer with little or no water permeability. If you look at soil pollution, and especially to groundwater pollution, you can understand that unconfined groundwater is pretty much vulnerable for contamination as it is not protected by a confining layer. On the other hand, you should realize that in soils in which the top layer is of a less permeable soil, like a clay, so a confining layer on top with several meters in thickness and an aquifer below, you can reach a groundwater table as well. So you can install a monitoring well in it and sample it. What I want to say is that one does not only install monitoring wells in aquifers in which water runs with a high velocity, sometimes you also want to know the water quality in, in a soil layer in which water flow velocity is very low. Well, ultimately, and I refer to my first webinar, um, one of the objectives of a monitoring well uh, in a study of soil contamination is to make distribution maps of contamination with the results of the analysis against the soil guideline values, indicating the degree of contamination of the relevant pollutant and its distribution. It is decided whether remediation is necessary. In this picture, um, the, the spreading of the pollutant is indicated by the different colors. So the pink color could mean where a L nipple can be found on the water. In the red area is the area where the water is heavily polluted as well and green is not polluted. One should realize that depending on the local soil conditions and depending on the number of contaminating substances on a specific site and the extent of the spreading in the groundwater, you can produce several maps for each contaminant, for example, on that specific site for each water bearing layer. So one for the phreatic, one for the first aquifer or the second aquifer, etc. In addition to make overviews of the distribution of the groundwater pollution, these are also necessary for making predictions. How will a pollution behave if we do nothing under the current hydrological conditions? So a little break. I hope everyone is still there and can hear me. I'm 10 minutes on ahead. So next slide. Uh, so it's not only a matter of monitoring the groundwater quality by sampling and analysis on a regular basis, but also monitor the quantity. We want to obtain information on the availability and spatial distribution of groundwater, for example, to establish groundwater lowering during the extraction of groundwater recharge or groundwater recharge. A pumping well, also called a discharge well, can be used in remediation to isolate and treat polluted subsoil. This is, uh, this is a process uh, generally known as pump and treat. In this picture on the right side, on, a, on the left side, you see the behavior of the groundwater when it's pumped from a pumping well. On the right side, for example, you, uh, the PP represents the pumping well and a PB a monitoring well in which you can measure the groundwater level. The orange yellow color reflects the water column and the green line which connects all the hydraulic heads of each monitoring well presents the cone of depression caused by pumping. These kind of tests are done to establish those kind of remediations and also to pump up the water for drinking water, for example, and to see the influence of the extraction in the surrounding environment of the pumping well. Um, an important uh, parameter to mention in this matter is the saturated hydraulic conductivity, 
this is an indicator of water flow rate in a soil and that is a key parameter for studying water flow and chemical transport through a soil profile. So but what is needed for good quality data? Uh, groundwater quantity flow rate data or for groundwater quality, uh, good quality water sample, for example, data. First of all, you need a good soil description. This is a soil description in German language, but it looks uh, almost the same. <laughs> um, you need a good soil description and a good soil layer description. And I should say no monitoring well without a good soil layer description. A monitoring well without a soil description, what kind of information is it giving you? The soil layer description is needed to install your well with its screen in the correct water bearing layer and not, for example, partly in the combining layer or too deep or too low. Also very important where to put your filter sand and where to put your bentonite plug. Over here you see that, I hope you can see my cursor, uh, you can see uh, this is a bentonite plug, this is a bentonite plug, and this is a bentonite plug to plug that confining layer, for example. I come back to bentonite plugs uh, further up in the presentation. Then, of course, you need a network network of monitoring wells. Not just one, but to get information of the spatial distribution, you need more and also on the different depths. And depending on the behavior of the chemical parameter involved uh, or concerned and the strategy you are following, you can use a certain grid uh, to install your monitoring wells. The determination of the flow direction um, um, is made by making a, um, a map of uh, isohipsis. Uh, it means um, with these uh, you produce a map with isohipsis. Those are lines uh, of groundwater of equal height. Um, therefore, you need to uh, record all the heads of the different wells in the area, and they need to be expressed to a certain reference level. And if there is a pumping well in the area, um, and um, then you can see that all those lines comes together to the uh, pumping well, as you can see over here in the red lines. And by this kind of maps, you can read the flow direction of the groundwater. How to measure the groundwater level? Measurement of the groundwater level can be done by a hand device or an automatic groundwater level logger. Um, well, a very simple device, uh, you can see it on, in the left corner at the bottom of this picture of this slide. And then this is what we call a plopper because it says plop when it hits the water. It, does, it must be connected to some measurement tape, of course. Another device in, is an electronic device, what we call a beeper, and because it, well, you can fill it in what it says. When it hits the water, it gives a signal. It's good to understand what the difference is uh, between the hand device and the logger, and this can be explained uh, on the, with the picture on the, uh, on the right side. Uh, the red line with the green dots, this is the line which you get if you perform uh, uh, four or five hand measurements every 14 days. But if you use a locker, and a locker you can program it uh, for every hour a measurement, 
you can see that there is much more happening with the groundwater in between. And this is interesting information. So a logger, in, in general, it gives you much more information. Well, monitoring wells are placed in a pre-made borehole or introduced by displacement. Essential for good groundwater sampling is a good flow of groundwater into the monitoring well and that the sampled water contains as few soil particles as possible. This can be, uh, this can be achieved by first pumping the wells clean just after installation to remove soil particles which were suspended into the groundwater by the drilling activities. Pumping is necessary until the water is clear and until you reach a stable electric, electrical conductivity value. So you are measuring as well. Only through the perforation, the slits, which you can see over here, these are slits, these are horizontal slits, and this is a screen with vertical slits. Only through the perforations in the filter screen, groundwater should enter the monitoring well. So it means that your joints should not leak. But they should not be glued as well because that is a source of contamination. So there are also uh, monitoring well pipes available with threads. And these kind of threads are also uh, will not leak as well. To prevent so soil material from entering the monitoring well through the perforations, uh, the very tiny soil parts, the screen part can be wrapped with a filter sleeve or surrounded with filter sand and gravel. So that can filter out the soil parts. Applying filter sand is not required for very well permeable soil layers. Uh, I mean coarse sand layers. After chemical physical stabilization, after installation, the groundwater level can be recorded or the groundwater can be sampled just after a pre-pumping procedure. Normally, after a monitoring well has been installed, you wait at least one week before you take your groundwater sample from it. So it's good to understand that there is a difference between the pumping with the aim to clean the monitoring well and the pre-pumping procedure before a sample is taken. They are different. And I will explain the pre-pumping procedure before sampling in the next webinar, next week. And also I will come back uh, on the displacement technique uh, in the next slides. Also good to realize is that you are the the diameter of a monitoring well could be only a few centimeters centimeters wide or with a maximum of uh, 70 uh, seven centimeters for example because you only need the hose or a small pump to get your groundwater sample this is something different than the pumping well they have much wider diameters For correct groundwater sampling, the filter screen should be completely below groundwater level. As a standard, in that case, a filter screen of a filter screen length of one meter is applied, and the rest of the well pipe, uh, we call it the blind pipe, it's not perforated. But it's not a problem to shorten or to make it longer, the, the length of the screen. If soil conditions ask for that or the aim of the investigation asks for that. 
like I just said before, the screen of the monitoring well should be completely underwater because otherwise the aeration of the water will occur and that gives you a bad quality groundwater sample. The borehole must be sealed with a bentonite clay, which you bring in to the borehole and to prevent direct penetration of the water from the ground level. You can see it over here. Into the filled borehole. Also penetrated impermeable layers. You can see it over here. I have to close my screen of the webinar. So now I have a better view on my screen. Um, also here you put the bentonite. So this is a borehole which is drilled through a confining layer, a clay layer for example, and after that you should close the gap. Um, that is why a detailed layer description for example <laughs> is very important. One should not bring the bentonite along the screen of course if you bring the bentonite over here then you have a problem because that bentonite will clock the screen and there is no water coming what you see on the right image this image uh, is the situation if a monitoring well has been placed above and below a confined layer so this is the one below the confining layer and this is the one below the confining layer the groundwater level of the first one, the phreatic one, water bearing layer, can be observed over here in the monitoring well, in the monitoring well under the confining layer. So in the aquifer, this is another different aquifer, the groundwater level is represented by the brown line, can also be, uh, can be observed. So in this monitoring well you cannot observe the phreatic one if it if the the monitoring well is uh, installed on a correct way this groundwater level of the aquifer is often lower or it could even higher than the phreatic groundwater level in case of the water pressure uh, rise is higher than the phreatic groundwater level and sometimes it can even rise above the ground surface level. So if you do not plug the confining layer properly with the bentonite, mixing of water can occur because then you are mixing this water over here with the phreatic water. So you mix different qualities or even water flooding of the ground surface will occur. I show you in the next slide. I hope it's clear. And now my next slide is not coming. Yeah, here it is. So this is the situation uh, next to our office. Um, it's in the garden. Uh, our factory is very close to a dike and the river. And on a certain moment, the river level was very high. There was water against the dike. The factory, of course, is over here. I made a borehole, and the local soil conditions are that there is a confiner layer on top of clay and peat, two meters of clay and one meter of peat. Then you enter the aquifer, and the aquifer is of sand and gravel. The river cuts with its bottom over here, with, with its bottom, it cuts into the aquifer. So if you have a very high water level in the river, that water column will push the water into the aquifer. And in the aquifer, there's a water pressure and it's pushing up against the bottom of that confining layer. So over here, there is a high water pressure because this is the water column. So I made a borehole and I didn't plug the borehole sufficiently. And then what is happening, the water will flow out of the borehole and it will enter the surface of the groundwater, of the ground level. 
and you can see it on this video. So I was taking a walk in the afternoon and during lunchtime and I suddenly saw that the whole area was very wet and you can see the water is coming from that borehole. You can also see a bluish brown coloring of the water. These are iron bacteria. And that is an indication that the water is coming from very deep, that it is coming from the aquifer in which the water stays very long and become rich with iron. So this is what is happening when you have two situations, a very high river level and the borehole which you do not plug sufficiently. This is not a permanent situation, but there are some parts in the Netherlands uh, under which the aquifer is always a, a pressure. So we are coming to the next uh, part of this presentation. We are going to talk about equipment, tools and consumables uh, for installing monitoring wells. Some of them I will explain more in detail and some of them speak for themselves. Um, well, you make a borehole by auguring, hammering, uh, or vibrating, etc. Most of the drilling techniques I explained in the first webinar, you choose a technique that allows a soil penetration, uh, a soil description, of course, or do a separate drilling for this. Um, when you use a displacement technique, for example, uh, installing a monitoring well. A displacement technique doesn't give you a soil description. So you need to have some kind of information before you apply it. Well, the chosen technique depends on different factors. Soil composition, of course, number of wells to be installed, the desired depth of uh, the monitoring well, and also the depth of the water table in the area, available equipment, uh, costs, location of the well, can I reach it with my drilling wick, desired number of wells per borehole, and also the desired diameter of the well. The most important rule is that one should be in control of the borehole. And it means the borehole should not collapse. Use a casing tube if the borehole tends to collapse. Furthermore, furthermore, there are some other rules. Um, for example, avoid injecting strange water in the soil. So, or restrict the amount of water to be used for the drilling. Avoid vertical contamination of the borehole and use clean drilling tools. If you make a borehole, that borehole should be a few centimeters wider than the well pipe. So, I mean, this is the well pipe and this is the diameter of the borehole. You should be able to apply filter sand, if needed, of course, and then you should be able to apply bentonite, uh, bentonite pellets in this case. And most important, you should be able to measure the depth of the applied bentonite. You want to know where did I put the bentonite? Where did I start? And where did I stop applying the bentonite? It's very important. That's the info information I need to know if I plug the borehole at the right spot. The use of a lost casing is a strange word, but um, regarding the casing of the borehole, sometimes a soil is so polluted that the risk of contamination is too big then it is recommended to use a so-called so-called lost casing or a perma permanent casing anyway it is a casing you will never pull out of the borehole again it prevents contamination and drilling down of the contaminated material <clears throat> so which mechanical drilling methods are applicable for environmental purposes uh, the main techniques are the hollow stem augering, uh, the mechanical baler and the sonic drill, and 
other techniques gives you a lot of risk for spreading of contamination. When you use a hollow stem auger, like this one, um, you should pay attention or be careful with this because when you are trying to plug the, the borehole uh, and impermeable layers, the drill itself leaves a large hole comparing to be plugged and this is from a small axis uh, from a small axis tube. So the inside diameter is uh, in respect to the outside diameter and the, the bentonite is put in that inside diameter and the bentonite should be able to plug the whole diameter of the borehole if you know what I mean. In addition to a drill hole, monitoring wells can also be installed by displacement, by pressing or hammering or vibrating a pointed pipe into the ground. A distinction can be made between installation methods without the use of a casing. The method without the casing, it is often not possible to apply in a correct way bentonite or gravel and is therefore generally not used for groundwater sampling in environmental soil research. It is not suitable. A casing with a lost cone can be inserted into the soil. The monitoring well or mini well with a pre-installed bentonite cuff on the well pipe is installed in the casing. Once the casing has been pulled up, the swelling clay cuffs ensure correct sealing. The lost point remains, that's the one in the middle, that is a lost point, remains permanently in the soil. I will talk about the swelling cuffs uh, in the next slides. So until now, we are only talking about monitoring wells for water level measurements or groundwater sample and groundwater sampling. The special type is a monitoring well specially installed uh, with the purpose to detect a floating layer with an L apple or a pure product layer with a D apple. The field engineer, so on the left side you see the floating layer, on the right side it's the D apple. The field engineer decides to install a floating layer de detection well when he sees a lot of hydrocarbons, for example, visibly floating on the water. So it says to him, this is heavily pollu polluted, maybe there will be a floating layer appearing on the groundwater. So he expects that the soil is so much polluted that the floating layer could be on the groundwater. The well to detect the l apple has a screen which should be installed in such a way that the screen of the well intersects the groundwater level with the hydrocarbon layer. So these filter sections may be two meters long or even longer instead of the standard one meter screen, uh, which is normally installed fully below the groundwater level. When the groundwater intersects the screen, that is the only way a floating layer develops in the well and you are able to measure the thickness of it. If you want to detect a layer with a Dean apple on the right picture, on the right side, then the screen needs to be installed just above or just in an impermeable layer, as you can see on the right side of this picture. There are special tools available to measure and sample uh, d apple and l apple layers. Preferably, do not use such a well for groundwater sampling, as results of the analysis are very high because this is pure product and it will not give you a lot of information only that that it's very high that it's pure product so it gives you, don't do it you already noticed that there is a floating layer and that is enough to say that the groundwater is heavily polluted why bring it why bring a sample to the laboratory You should realize that the quality of the groundwater can be influenced by the, the nature of the materials, 
used, such as monitoring raw material, filter sleeves, filter scent, and the bentonite by leaching. So regarding the well pipe material, material, if you apply PVC well pipe material, then it is possible that some PVC could give lead uh, or phthalatin to the groundwater. If those are the substances of which you are aiming for in your investigation, then that is not something that you want. Also, PVC can absorb hydrocarbons and give it to the water on a different occasion. So, if the groundwater is heavily polluted with hydrocarbons, it is better to use HDPE. HDPE is hydrocarbon resistant. Um, then you can use stainless steel or uh, PTFE, but those kind of materials are not often used. In general, the rule is use tested materials of which you are sure that they will not give substances of which you are aiming for to the groundwater. You should have a, uh, a good quality groundwater sample. The same applies for the usage of filter scent. Also, this should be clean, this should be tested. And the same applies of the usage of bentonite. Well, bentonite is a clay which expands when it's becoming wet, absorbing as much as several times its dry mass in water. So bentonite is available in pellets to fill up the borehole manually. It is available in plugs uh, of different sizes to plug a bore, small borehole or also available are colors on the right picture of bentonite for around well pipes to plug boreholes of example 70 millimeters or 90 millimeters. The application of filter scent and also bentonite pellets is often difficult, especially in um, narrow casings or narrow boreholes. Yeah, I, I refer to the few centimeters which is needed between the borehole and the well pipe to apply uh, pellets of bentonite and filter sand. To make sure that both filter sand and bentonite will come at the right spot, it is also possible to use prefabricated monitoring wells with the filter sand pre-installed along the screen and the same applies for the bentonite. So you have bentonite plugs, uh, no collars around a well pipe. You can see it on the right picture over here. So after you made your borehole together on the base of the soil layer description, you construct your monitoring well, where to put your bentonite with the different parts and you bring it in its entirety in the borehole. If a monitoring well is in an unsafe place or prone to damage, uh, for example, in a meadow with a high grass or along a public road, install protective and marking covers. A monitoring well can cost you a lot of money, so there is a need to protect it against damage. If well maintained, the groundwater monitoring well can be used for many for many years. So maintaining means taking care of the cover protection, pumping away the senti sedimented soil potato particles every now, uh, now and then, and preventing from clogging. I talked about the pumping of the well. Well, then you need uh, some kind of a pump, of course, and an EC meter to check the EC values. Um, but after you install the monitoring well, provide the monitoring well immediately, immediately after installing with a sustainable label, label uh, with at least uh, the number of the monitoring well, the date of the placement and filter depth. 
an indication of the flow of the flow rate and this is for the next webinar i will explain in the next webinar last but not least very important make a report of the installation of the well with at least these kind of items the soil layer description the date of the drilling and installing of the well coordinates um, so use a gps or something um, the drilling method depth of the well it means the the length of the well the top of casing or top of the well pipe the length of the screen the applied well pipe material the ec value after installation and the depth of the sections with the bentonite and the filter sand um, pay attention to your field report that is information which is needed so this is the end of my presentation uh, if you want more info information, you can send us an email or look at our website. So now I will come to see if there are any written questions. And I have to take a look how to do this. And this questions five. Can you be a little, a little bit louder, please? Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I finished already. It is not required for the well screen to be completely below the water table. It is even recommended to raise the screen top above the water table for monitoring wells. I don't see the whole question now. I cannot. It is not, I repeat the question. This is the second question. It is not require, uh, not a requirement for the well screen to be completely below the table. It is even recommended to raise the screen top above the water table for monitoring wells built to monitor l Naple type contamination. Yeah, that's what I agree and that's what I explained. Because if you put the screen completely below the water table then there will not be uh, a l nepple the floating layer of l nepple uh, developing so it should be intersected i think i gave the same information the third question how could you close the borehole better cause the water came through how could you close the borehole better cause the water came through your screen and the tubes yeah that's correct of course it's not only uh, if if you are in a situation that there is water pressure from below uh, first of of course you should close your borehole with the bentonite so it prevents coming up water uh, from the borehole but the the water will also come up in your monitoring well well, first you have to estimate how far up above the groundwater level, um, uh, how far up above the ground level the water is coming. So you extend the, the top of the monitoring well. So you put it for, let's say, one meter above the groundwater, a uh, ground level. And uh, if this doesn't help, then you need to use a cap which you can close with a thread, a watertight um, cap on top of the monitoring well. Is that clear? Yeah, and then second question of the next question, how to get the bentonite pellets on the correct depth? Um, well, you have your borehole, you have your layer description, then you are going to install your monitoring well. You know from the soil layer description where to put your bentonite pellets. So first you are going to fill up the borehole with 
um, with the filter sand, then you measure it till how far you have put your filter sand. And at a certain point, you are going to decide to fill up the borehole with bentonite pellets. So it's, so it's a matter of bringing in pellets and measuring, bringing, it, bringing in pellets and measuring. Keep measuring. That's the only way. Or use the um, the well pipes with the bentonite cuffs uh, upon it. Second question of the next question: <laughs> Can you please explain the placement of screens in wells for the detection of D napple, L napple again? When do you place the screen fully under the groundwater level, and when? Uh, fully under the groundwater level, and when should it intersect? Uh, I thought I explained it twice now. So, in a standard situation in which you do not want to detect the uh, L apple, you put your screen completely below the groundwater level. If you want to detect a L apple, then the screen should intersect the groundwater. For the D apple, uh, it is a dense, non aqueous phase liquid, so that pollution will sink through the aquifer until it reaches a confining layer. So you have to find out where the confining layer is, and there you put then you put your uh, screen it could be one meter or two meters uh, just above that confining layer so it means for a dean apple the screen is completely below groundwater in the aquifer but it is installed just above that confining layer then you can see if there is a dean apple I hope I'm clear now. Next question. Yes, but those pellets get easily blocked in the casing. Yes, that's correct. That is sometimes a problem. So uh, use a well pipe diameter, which gives you a sufficient space between the casing and your uh well pipe that's that's the case um uh, so yes but those pellets get easily blocked in the casing at that moment you even cannot get your casing out of the groundwater anymore or you take the complete piezometer out <laughs> yes that's correct <laughs> That is one of the problems of the field engineer. And that's the problem of the field engineer, which is impatient. At first, it starts that your borehole should be completely free of uh, soil, which is suspending in the water before you install your monitoring well. But when you are applying bentonite or filter sand, you should pull up your casing at the same moment or do it in small steps of 20 centimeters. So it is bringing in bentonite, measuring how deep, pull up your casing 20, 30 centimeters, and then repeat the same, um, repeat the same uh, uh, as I explained. Uh, bring in the bentonite, measure it, pull up the the casing. The the problem with this uh, suspended material, it is um, when you are pulling out the casing and the monitoring well is coming out as well, then it's not only the bentonite which um, causes that the monitoring well is stuck between the bentonite and the casing. That's the problem. It is mainly, it is the suspended material which come 
between the well pipe and the casing. So when you are pulling out the casing, then the monitoring well will come up as well. That is not something that you want. So you need to pay attention and take your time to get a borehole which is completely free of suspended material. If you are impatient and you, if there's still suspended material in your borehole and you bring in your monitoring well, then that monitoring well get blocked. Is there a video available showing installation of a monitoring well? Uh, not yet, but we are working on it, but it is also um, a matter of doing it. Will you, next question, will you send us a presentation slides uh, via mails? Yes, we will do. And also this presentation will be on the YouTube channel in the future. So this was the last last question I saw on the dashboard. If there are no questions uh, at the moment, you still have the possibility to ask questions to the email addresses below. I wait for one minute or a few seconds. We are now at 52 minutes. So thank you for your attention. And I will close the webinar for now. I hope to see you next week. Thank you. Bye bye.